Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. Once a week, I pick some topic of interest in C++ and dig into it with some live coding. In this episode, I'm continuing my series on new features in C++ 17 with the if and switch init statements that were voted in at the OLO meeting. Now, unfortunately for this example, I don't yet have a compiler that can compile these things, but I think we can still get away with giving some pretty good examples. So let's say you have code like this. Now say you have your vector and you want to get an iterator to some part of it. Let's say you want to find if there's a 1 and you want to change that to a 3. And you say if the iter does not equal vec.end, then iter equals 3. All right, so we found a 2 and we changed it to a 3. And then say a little bit later on in our example, we want to, I don't know, look for a 4 starting All right, that's a little bit better. We're going to use a standard find algorithm. We want to look for the first two and change it to a three. And then we want to look for the, let's say, last three. And change it to a four. All right, that should work. We expect this to compile. So we're just going to use our G++, let's say version 5, with C++ 14, and we forgot our algorithm header. And I made this a const iterator. Ah, here we go. So, let's do that. Compiles? No. Okay, that compiles. So we look for the first two, replace it with a three, we look for the last three, replace it with a four, then we kind of expect it to be, I guess, one, three, four, four would be our resulting vector. And I had a couple of mistakes there with using const where I shouldn't have yet. And, but this should be allowed. Right, okay, very good. So this is the example we want to start from, and this is the exact kind of thing that, in my opinion, we are trying to solve with our new init statements that are allowed in if blocks. So if we have this code, we've got a couple problems with it. First of all, and we saw this already in the demonstration, we've got this iter, and then what do we name the second iterator? Well, I named it iter2 just to get it out of the way of the first one. So we've got a variable that is lasting longer than we want it to on the stack, which is not ideal because it muddies up our local namespace and the compiler isn't able to optimize necessarily as well, though this is a very simple case. So you might be tempted to do something like this. And then this way you can reuse your names and everything works exactly like you want it to. Now granted, I will say right now there's probably some other standard algorithm that would be better for what I'm trying to do, but I'm trying to illustrate a point. So now I can do this. And that should compile because our iter now is popped from the scope at the end of this one. So now we have if and it blocks. And we can do this kind of thing. And this is the part where I will not be able to compile it to show you that it works. But this is the idea. So the question is, you know, why not just make it look like uh, a for loop, essentially? And that's what the standards committee has gone ahead and done. So we can now just put this init statement at the front of our 
this block. And now we have simpler code that has a more controlled lifetime of our variable that we only need for the if block. And everything works as expected. You might be asking, what happens in our else block? And what is the lifetime of iter? And the question is, it does exist here in this block because it was exactly equivalent to the version that we had done before where we had an outer scope that contained our iter. So for the sake of this example, I'm going to pull this out, put it here. OK, so now the top and bottom blocks are functionally equivalent. So if we wanted to, in here, say that we wanted to insert at the end of the thing a new value in the else case, we can do that. And we can do that here also. And similarly, if this were a else if and we had another condition and we wanted to say and now we want to do something here with our else we say, oh well, front did not uh, does equal to, so we want to, I don't know, return front. So that variable that we created in this init statement is going to be good in this block, and the iter is going to be good here, and iter is still good here, because all this is functionally equivalent to as if we had done this. So I hope that makes sense, and you can see how we are building up the scopes that are going to be automatically created whenever you do one of these if init statements. And I am really looking forward to it because I think there's a few cases where it can clean up code that I do personally because I really don't like having to give arbitrary names to things, and I really don't like variables living longer than I need them to. So I almost forgot to mention that this will also be available for switch blocks. And you'll be able to do something like this. But for me personally, the utility of this seems um, a little bit more obscure than for the if statement Annette's. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.